another episode of Cavell Cloud Conversations. The topic for today is voice or video, which is actually more efficient. We have some people who are still choosing to use voice, even though video is um, available. We have people who are saying they don't want their video enabled. What is actually leading to better productivity at companies and how should managers handle this? We have a really exciting discussion for you today, so stay tuned. All right, so back again with my colleague Patrick, experts in communications, um, to talk about communication, I guess. Uh, one of the things that came up on the last podcast, which we both found quite interesting, was just that discussion about how conversation, even within an office environment, has changed from spider phone, desk phone, voice, video into the metaverse. But one of the things we thought that would actually be worth discussing more is that change from voice to video and whether actually everyone is happy with that because i know i've had quite a few conversations with companies that have said they're actually switching away from video because they find it's less productive um i don't know patrick say hello to everyone why don't you give us your initial thoughts yeah good, good afternoon everyone yeah I, I think this is this is quite an interesting topic and we saw we obviously saw that that huge boom in in video conferencing or video calling or however you want to brand it during the pandemic the initial start of the pandemic which is obviously so long ago now and i think uh, while i was doing the background research for this i was i was thinking oh sort of benefits of video benefits of voice obviously we're familiar with some it, it really does depend who, who is who's sort of providing the information depends on how the, the benefits <laughs> are spun. It, it, yeah if you're talking to a sort of if you're looking i ended up on traditional voice providers websites and naturally they are towards the the benefits of uh, a voice without video yeah. and if you end up on a, a video specialist provider they talk about the the benefits of video so it, it did appear to me that it's it's quite a nuanced debate and there are there are benefits on on, on either side is that is that ambiguous enough that is ambiguous enough, enough to there? get us started i think we'll get into it Good. a bit more so i'm just thinking about like voice worked fine for what we needed it to do it, it communicated exactly what you wanted to say you said it very clearly but there were there were issues right the issues i interrupt you all the time because i can't see if you're about to say something um can't tell if someone's trying to talk when they're on mute and there's just silence on the line um you know you kind of like a disconnect from what the other person actually looks like i guess interacting with them. what what are the other problems with voice yeah well i mean it's it, it, not so much the problems with voice, I suppose, although the, although all of those problems that you've listed are, are 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 issues. It's more the the additional benefits that video brings, yeah. and they obviously correspond to a lot of the things that you were talking about. You get those you get those visual cues, and and I hate to continually go back to the pandemic because it was so long ago. But I think a lot of the that sort of boom in video was if you if you weren't seeing your colleagues in the office. Yeah. then you you wanted to see them virtually so there yeah. was this huge rise in demand for actually being able to to see other people mm. now as we move back to hybrid working or working from anywhere or working in the office and, and what and whatever that might look like for businesses of different sizes probably the relevance of actually seeing your colleagues every time you need a call or need to talk mm -hmm. to each other is significantly less relevant and i think as as you were talking when we discussed this previously you were talking there's it's it's a very strenuous medium video that, yeah. that in terms of human interaction that level of engagement effectively staring at a, a moving picture on a screen mm -hmm. that there's been a lot of studies about the sort of stress that that creates for for workers yeah. and i think th there there are problems on both sides video potentially brings a lot of benefits but also there are, mm. and increasingly, I think the research is done now, now that it's being used more and more about the potential uh, issues and, and but that, uh, that, problems. That it that's what I was telling you is that when I went on a call, if I'm not the person who's leading the call or I don't need everyone's eyes on me, I like in, unless there's a need for me to be seen, I very much want to turn my video off because I don't want to be perceived for that long. And I think yeah. that's a fairly common sentiment that we're seeing people respond to is that it, it's not necessarily about even like having to dress up or i mean because that's just put on a nice t-shirt right for our line of work yeah it's more just about the fact that people can be watching like and that 
process of being in a public area where people can see you is something that some people find very tiring because it's one thing that came out during our research is that one of the things that very large companies were doing was trying to profile their employees and try and figure out where they fit in this whole scale of introvert to extrovert it's one of the things that started this voice versus video conversation originally is that we can't assume that everyone is super happy to be on camera really wants to see people is really friendly all the time uh just as much as we can't assume that people want to work in their box and never speak to anyone and one of these companies was sitting down and just doing lots of surveys to poll their employees and try and figure out where those points of friction were where people like i don't want to do a call first thing in the morning because i'm very self-conscious because i haven't woken up i haven't had coffee i haven't you know done all those things but by the afternoon, I'm more comfortable. I could do a call and not worry about it. And I think there's lots of these little friction points that people are starting to realise. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and and video, even from a from a personal perspective, it is especially when you're working from home or working from another location. It is it is pretty invasive. And that, yeah. and for example, on this call, I am I, I don't have a home office. Unfortunately, this is my living room. Yeah. And effectively, every time we're on a call, luckily I don't. I don't mind you seeing my living room, but I can, and, and I've got, I've got um, a couple of friends who I've spoken to about this, who are at large organisations within the UK, both of them, mm-hmm. and they're, all of their calls now, video is mandatory. Yeah. You have to be on video. Now that strikes me as a, as a real problem, and yeah. I'm not sure if it's enshrined in their contracts or whatever that is, but that that strikes me as a privacy issue. I, if I now don't this, want to, I shouldn't let you have to see my living room. That is actually very interesting because I've heard the, I've heard that in America some companies tried to make it mandatory, and I don't know if they were a legal firm, a professional services firm, but they were the sort of people who know lawyers, right? And they yep. spoke to their legal friends, and the legal friend said that nowhere in their contract was it written that they got to see the inside of your house, which meant that. Yep. They could never make video mandatory without rewriting the contracts for people at the company because they hadn't essentially paid you for the right to invade your privacy within your home. And I found that very fascinating. Yeah, and I'm sure that's the case. And I even uh, the, the couple of friends I spoke to, one of them doesn't mind. The other one would much rather not be on video. And I made the point, I'm sure you could raise this, that this is not in my contract for you yeah. to. And I think when it was made, you know, it's, it's a sort of informal mandate within yeah. their group or division yeah. rather than. You, 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 and I'm sure if they but made the, the argument, the thing is, you don't this necessarily. My contract. You don't want to be the person pushing back on that a lot of the time. No, absolutely. You don't want to be the guy going yeah. to your manager and being like, "I know you think this makes us more productive, but no, thank you." Um, you know, but I think yeah. it's it's kind of an important part of this conversation as we make this huge shift towards videos as kind of a default that not everyone is okay with that, and I think that's yeah. very important to acknowledge is that not everyone is okay with that because. No, yeah. you're absolutely right. I, I would completely agree with that. And you, and you mentioned productivity, and it's probably I'm probably preempting the, the questions here. But the, <laughs> but the productivity argument is is particularly yeah. interesting because you would think uh, potentially you are more productive over video. You get, as you were saying, you get some of those visual cues. You get that sort of thing. But as I said, when I was doing the research, there was there've been lots of academic studies into this, and there was one in particular that I was looking at that came from Yale. And they tested um, voice only versus video only versus voice and video combined. Uh, and across all the studies, the voice only method came out uh, as the most productive mm. and in terms of empathetic understanding. That's so interesting, which which I thought was which I thought was strange because and apparently there's you would have thought you'd be able to judge people better when you can see them. But apparently a lot of those non-verbal cues in your voice can actually be more easily interpreted and it's quite easy for me to sit in a meeting now i'm smiling i'm not enjoying this process at all it looks like i am but I, you know effectively hum- we've become quite good at masking our facial, yeah. facial expressions but they do always say that you can hear when people are smiling as well so that is kind of tied to it a bit i guess yeah i would have thought so but maybe maybe that is potentially more difficult to interpret but i found that particularly interesting because i thought in terms of productivity you would have thought video and and obviously we're discounting all of those sort of collaborative elements that you can do on video in terms of screen share and collaborative work that you you can't do on a voice call which is yeah which is potentially part of the argument as well i think the productivity thing is very interesting for me around a few just different different sort of 
angles. So on the one hand, I mean, we, we've got that very interesting stuff about empathy and how we communicate better, which I, I would have assumed was better over the video. But I mean, if you're saying it's not, we'll have to we'll have to listen to that. It but, was Yale. I blame Yale. Outsource you know, all blame to Yale. The one there's two things that spring to mind, two examples that spring to mind that I want to talk about from my, from my own conversations yep. of the past year. The first was from a very big outsource contact center, so for sales. So you know, you know the sort of organization. I need a sales staff. I don't have any. I pay you to be my sales staff, and you, your guys make 30, 40 calls a day, right? So people who call constantly, and they have originally they had video calls with their customers, so the people who are hiring them to do the sales. And they said that their weekly calls just became so inefficient, right? Because it wasn't just a quick call to catch up on stuff. There was always an added element of, because I'm seeing you, I have to interact more yep. like socially than I would on a catch-up call. And it's like, oh, your cat wandered into the screen. Now we have to talk about your cat for five minutes. Oh, you're yes. looking, you know, you've got a new haircut. Like All this visual stuff that doesn't really impact business suddenly becomes because you feel like if you're seeing someone you have to break the ice you have to make that conversation so they said yeah. that for the monthly calls for kickoff calls still video still want to see people face to face wherever possible 100 percent. and then for the weekly calls just only voice and with a strict time limit and just so much easier to just get on and knock through the points but the other thing that i wanted to raised on productivity is that the other conversation i had was someone was like anytime we have a morning call i have a nap afterwards they were like if i have a call that's more than an hour or two hours long in the morning it exhausts me and i just go straight i just go straight to bed for half an hour and i'm just like that is not productive <laughs> right? no, no, not <laughs> like real. so if video is actually exhausting some people to the point where they're just like oh it's time for a nap like <laughs> we're in a very weird paradigm right yeah, yeah, and, and, and we heard uh, go, going back about, and I felt this was rather unfair on Zoom, although they did become sort of the poster boy and it became wow. a, you know, a verb to Zoom, but you heard, we had Zoom fatigue and all of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I hadn't thought, and that's a really good point, and that is something I hadn't factored in, that effectively on video, there are so that there's so much demand on attention and there's so many potential potential distractions and, and as yeah. you were talking about before although my hair and my hairstyle very rarely uh, is a source of distraction the animals that are in the yeah. house the cat <laughs> occasionally comes in that that is a distraction so you're right and, and on the phone that wouldn't be wouldn't be such an issue just over a voice call and it's not to say that it's not a pleasant distraction or that it's not something that brings us closer as colleagues it, it fulfills that role yeah. but when our focus is like really f like quick catch up meeting, removing those periphery things is actually quite, you know, it's, it makes it more efficient. So you can understand that, that yeah. logic that it just makes it much more efficient in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that completely makes sense. Re removing those distractions and uh, sort of focusing that attention on the, on the one, on the one sense effectively audio yeah, is, words, is yeah. potentially beneficial beneficial yeah that's interesting so it's, i mean it seems like they both have specific use cases where they're better but then really which we use is just a cultural thing yeah absolutely and and i i wrote as a sort of um as i was thinking of my my sort of conclusions and again i'm going to be complete i'm going to completely sit on the fence and be sort of vague <laughs> and as agnostic, agnostic as possible and that and it came back to that the video in my friend's company being sort of informally mandatory i think it should, it should businesses should just enable flexibility for their staff yeah. if if they want to do stuff on video let them do it on video if they want to do voice only do voice only it avoids you know and as you said is a people are very different we we've, yeah. we've talked about personality types within businesses for 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 decades and even even longer than that and it and it is exactly the same when it comes to technology yeah people have different preferences and personal and business preference should be the key factor if your business thinks for a specific reason voice is better or video is better they should still take into account the the preferences yeah. of the user i think i think that is the the key thing and that comes with all technology just but yeah and i think as part and parcel of that which we've kind of hinted at is that as a manager of people who are using these flexible technologies, it's not sufficient to just say to people, use whatever you want. You kind of have to have a narrative where 
it's not only acceptable to choose that option, but it's understood when someone chooses that option that it's fine, right? Because yeah. we talked a lot about this in terms of the working from home, people coming back into the office. But if your manager's back in the office five days a week, then suddenly you have to be back in the office five days a week as well, because otherwise yeah. you're not getting FaceTime, right? And there needs to be an understanding that even if you as a manager are super committed to video calling all the time, it needs to be okay and you're still really positively engaging with the people on the call who aren't on video and making that extra effort to double check. Like if someone never wants to be on video, just checking with them at the end of the call to make sure they've had a chance to get their their bits in because they can't raise their hand or maybe normalizing the raise hand function for example when people have something they want to say so that even people who aren't on video can be like actually one second i want to add in something as well there are the tools here to to reduce that friction and get everyone engaged but it's kind of like a cultural decision yeah that, that's definitely true and that that inclusivity piece and i am the, the, the probably the the remotest member of the Cavell team yeah, or I was sure. recently geographically and th that inclusivity thing is is potentially more of a challenge if you're voice only because you're just not there there's no visual cue that you're yeah. there when you talked about the the sort of manageability and and this I'm taking a slight sidetrack that's here. all right we that like that tracks. bring <laughs> yeah that brings in the sort of not quite conspiracy element to me but i think there are some concerning elements and we t we talked about sort of the privacy implications of video but there are also those sort of engagement monitoring cues and we've seen um i remember hearing a case study and i can't remember which vendor it was of uh, students remote learning during during the pandemic i think it was and effectively they're on video with a lecture on video and what the software can do it, it will iris track you so it knows if you're mm -hmm. centered on the screen you're looking or if I'm just, you know, lazily looking <laughs> off around my room for something more interesting. And I thought, I think a lot of that, and especially in the example I was talking about before with my friend's company, I think the the reason that they're wanted on video is so that they can just be seen that they're working. Yeah. And that is such a traditional, almost archaic yeah. view of it's the, it goes back to that in office out of the office debate if you if if a traditional manager couldn't see you sat at your desk with beads of sweat pouring down your head they didn't believe you were working and i think there's a negative issue there with video that it it potentially can be it could be used for that in terms of mm -hmm. that engagement and as you were saying it, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you're not on video you're not engaged with the process you're not product you're not productive you're not a team player it's it's personal preference yeah and, and even within that i mean there's enough neurodivergency within i like using that word neurodivergency within offices nice. like i know people who need to fidget when they're on calls with yep. anything i know people who need to not look at the person who's speaking all the time to process what they're saying like i know a full range of people who just engage with audio and visual content in different ways and someone not staring directly at the camera trying to stay awake when they should actually just be fidgeting with something on their desk off camera is is where we're getting to as a as a business culture if you will is an understanding of that flexibility my one of the things i had a boss who was actually quite good at keeping people out of meetings they didn't need to be in and he, which sounds underrated, but actually it was incredibly, as a manager, when I was much younger, it was incredibly like respected because he, he basically had a theory, which is like, unless you were the person designated to take notes, if you went into a meeting and you had nothing to say for the entire meeting, that was a meeting you shouldn't have been in, right? So yeah, obviously with someone taking notes, that's, there's always going to be someone who's got to make the notes and do all the stuff. But but ultimately, if you had five people at a meeting and two of them didn't have anything to say, there was always two questions he asked after the meeting. The first thing was, you know, did you have things to say that you didn't have a chance to say because someone was talking too much or someone beat you to it? That's one thing. That's fine. Or was there just nothing for you to contribute? And if so... Yeah, and in that case, why were you there? Why were yeah. you there? Not in a harsh way, not in a punishment way, just more of a, do you need to come to the next one? Do you need to yeah, know absolutely. what's being talked about? If you don't need to know what's being talked about and you have nothing to contribute, then just read the notes if you need a reference. And and he was very, very good. And I'll say the same thing I think is true about these mixed dynamics. If you've got someone on the phone and you're wondering that they never contribute and they're not taking notes, maybe they just shouldn't be in the meeting. And if they are part of the meeting it shouldn't matter whether they got their video call turned on or not because you'll know they're engaged because they're contributing so yeah very valid point yeah it, absolutely you know yeah i, would, I completely i completely agree with that it's that 
it's that the level of personalization and, and nuance and understanding. And I'd completely forgotten about that. I remember working in a in a sales department when I and when I was younger and I wasn't too bad. I'd sit there, but I had colleagues who would make their sales calls on their headset and they would walk 10 miles yeah. literally round our yeah, yeah. 20 meter office just because they were more comfortable walking and talking. And that obviously in a video setting, unless you're on a, a mobile endpoint or you've got a you know, a GoPro on your head, which I'm, I may trial. Um, <laughs> Didn't you do is, that with the dogs really once? You put a GoPro on the dog. I, I did, although... See, that you know, was his, quality content. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His his productivity, um, uh, not not the best, I must, I must say. Yeah. We all enjoyed it, but, you know... <laughs> yes. Um, that is the content the podcast really wants to see, is GoPro dog footage. Um, yes. Yeah, so it's just kind of interesting. I think like, there's a lot... Because the technology isn't really the challenge in this in this situation. We have pretty good voice. We have pretty good video. There's just kind of a question about what we want to do. And I know most companies aren't going to do the most efficient thing. I mean, I don't know if you've ever read the study that says the most efficient way to get people out of the London Underground is actually to have two people standing next to each other on every single escalator all the way up. Right? You probably didn't that. know this, but people from London will be like, no, that's madness. I, I need to be able to walk up on the left. I will tell you 100% the number of people who can get off a tube platform if everyone just stands two by two on the escalator is much, much faster compared to doing one line with a few people walking up every now and then. But because we want to give people the freedom to walk up, we sacrifice half of the efficiency of the escalator, right? It's absolutely ridiculous. But my, my point is analogy. that culture isn't always determined by what the best thing is sometimes it's just what we do because it pisses some people off if we don't do it that way so i expect this to be a a mess of different cultures for a long time but yeah i i, I would i would absolutely agree i don't think i mean i don't think we've seen the 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 perfect strategy and as i said i think that strategy will be determined by flexibility and yeah. the the best companies are those that will embrace that and and do in other areas as as you've cited for for their users let your mm. if you trust the people you've employed which ultimately you should then let them determine the the most productive and efficient and and comfortable ultimately way for them to communicate whether that's voice or video or or even and we haven't even come across you know uh, anyone who, who might not want to be voice chat at all and might just might just want to chat might be incredibly efficient at their job you know they can yeah you know there's there's all sorts of uh different different variants but i think it's that it's yeah. that level of flexibility and, and choice across the spectrum i have met a few people who are only on slack they only email they just don't want to talk to you they don't it's just yeah. not how they express themselves and i think that is kind of probably where we'll wrap up it's just this this need for understanding that we have so many modes of communication now they may not all be suited to everyone you employ and it's kind of important to reach an understanding of where the actual efficiency lies in terms of keeping your employees happy but also keeping them you know communicating effectively yeah completely agree all right thanks patrick <laughs> my pleasure thanks for having me on again i've enjoyed it as always brilliant well i hope you enjoyed that that was episode two of the cabal cloud conversations podcast this is a really great podcast. I mean, I really enjoy doing it with my colleagues, bringing some of these hot discussions in communications and cloud to all of you listeners. Um, if you like this podcast, you know, do like, subscribe, rate us on whatever site you're listening to this on. It really does help spread sort of the bandwidth and get those algorithms all working in our favor. And of course, working in tech, we know all about algorithms. Thanks again. Stay tuned for the next episode. We aim to publish every two weeks. Um, so you should have some interesting content from us every two or three weeks, you know, getting that sort of you know, fix of what's happening in, in comms and in cloud and that kind of thing. So can't wait to speak to you again. See you all in a few weeks.